Merhabalar. Eğer böyle arkalarda daha yakından dinlemek isteyenler olursa onları da böyle buradaki sandalyelere doğru davet edebilirim. Hoş geldiniz. Bozcalı Caz Festivali'nin ilk etkinliğini açmak bana nasip oldu bu sene. Ben ekipten Bade. Bugün kasabada Nubia Garden'a Baya Garcia ile beraber Naz'ın bize birazcık önümüzdeki Kasım'da yapacağımız Kızlar için Caz Projesi'ni anlatacağımız küçük bir oturum düzenlemek istedik. Hem böyle bizim için proje öncesinde küçük bir ön izleme hem de size heyecanlanacak güzel bilgiler veriyor olacağız. So, I, we're gonna continue in English. So, welcome all. And I'm, I want to start with Naz because she wants to give us a little bit more information about the project itself and what are we thinking about the project while we are applying the fund and what is the aim of the project actually. So if you want to continue Naz, the floor is yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So hello everyone. Uh, hello. <laughs> We're very glad to have you here. So um, as far as part of the first projects of Keshif, which is our new um, creative enterprise funded by um, Three Dots and Fermente, uh, which are the founding partners of Bozja the Jazz Festival. So as part of uh, the project that's going to be happening in mid-November this year, uh, Jazz Camp for Girls uh, is going to be basically a camp for girls to foster inclusivity as well as um, their um, education at a younger age. Uh, so the Jazz Camp for Girls project has been uh, going on for more than 10 years. It started in uh, 2014 um, and it's actually funded by um, the um, the Jazz um, Festival in, in Copenhagen. Um, is funded by Jazz Denmark as well as um, Nordisk Culture Fund. Um, and so it started there and then it actually moved uh, towards uh, Britain, UK. And um, as part of the first projects of Keshif, uh, we will be taking over the Turkey adaptation. Uh, so the main aim of the project is actually to foster uh, the education of girls so that this will actually allow um, them to be more included in the jazz field, in the music, because we one of the main advocacy areas of Bozja the Jazz Festival is to actually uh, foster the gender um, balance. Uh, so the aim is to actually start from the core uh, and to develop this further on. Um, and so perhaps we can take over with Nubia's, Nubia's um, questions as well. First, so Nubaya, um, I came across with many interviews that you talk about your your early experiences in places like the Roundhouse and Tomorrow War Tomorrow's Warriors, and we we thought that it's it's a great opportunity to talk about starting music in young age and finding your own community and the sense of belonging and to go with the, to to just uh, initiate collaborations with your tribe. So can you tell us a little bit more about your past and your, your early career and then how you decided to go on with these early inspirations and finding your own community and your own tribe? <laughs> it's a long question, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, hello, uh, hello. I think um, hi, everyone. Um, okay, let me break this down then. <laughs> let me try. Uh, okay, so... I began music quite early because my family was um, very musical, my siblings. So that was my route into making music. I started at like three or four years old. Um, not that you need to or that that is a requirement, but that's what I did. And um, my first place that I landed was Camden Music. I'm from Camden in London, Camden Town, and they've got an amazing um, music program. Um, lots of schools are involved and lots of extra weekend activities. That was my place, basically. Um, and then around like early teens, so that was like from, you know, four up until many, many years later, like 18, 19, but around 11, my mum found out about um, this place called The Roundhouse, which is a venue in London, in Chalk Farm, which is part of Camden Town. Um, and they were doing uh, like a jazz course, and it was quite small. 
um, and the Roundhouse is a really special place because they uh, provide facilities, recording studios, rehearsal rooms, um, gig opportunities, event spaces for 16 to 25. And I mention that because I think it's really important to not age people out. When they get to 18, um, you're suddenly expected to like, okay, you can't do the, the young people's courses anymore. I think it's very important to have 18 to 25 and even post 25 to have spaces where you can still receive education, where you can still um, gain, you know, the useful things from having a space to go to. Anyway, so that was the roundhouse. Met a lot of people there. Um, had a great teacher, etc. And it was all very close to my house. So that is also something that's quite important. Accessibility. Um, and then around like 16, um, I got into the Royal Academy of Music Junior course. So that was for jazz as well. Um, a very, very different, very different environment to the environments that I was used to. It's quite... Uh, like elitist um, but also felt really amazing for someone like me um, of low economic background to have accessibility to that environment um, so that was important basically I'm telling you all these things because it was a cross-section of things that have got me to where I am now and provided the community that I have now um, after Junior Academy, that's actually where I found someone was going to a jam session after one of our sessions, and um, Rosie Turton, trombone player, and uh, she was like, "Oh, there's a there's a blues workshop down at South Bank with Tomorrow's Warriors," and um, I was like, "Oh, like how do you get in? What's the vibe?" and she was like, "Yeah, it's free," and I was like, "Anything free in London?" I was like, "All right, let's go." Um, also important to provide spaces that are, you know. Whoa, one, one. There we go. We're still, we're still in. Um, to provide spaces that many people can get to, can afford, can feel welcome to. Um, so went down to that workshop, and that was Tomorrow's Warriors. Met Gary Crosby, and he really encouraged me to come back. When I got to Tomorrow's Warriors at that session, I was particularly invited by the environment because. It, there were a lot of young women there and there were a lot of young black people there which wasn't always the case in London so I felt very um, included basically and I felt like I didn't stick out and I wasn't the only one and I think that's really important in um, do you need to mute this channel or something I don't know sorry should I keep going is it me is it my channel third switch um and yeah so tomorrow's warriors was um a really really important home hub for where i met a lot of the people that i still play with and then after tomorrow's warriors or like at the same time they helped me um and encouraged me really to get into a music conservatoire to study jazz music university um and that is pretty much a condensed version with very little detail of my musical education. So thank you, Nubia. The, uh, Nubaya, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you, Nubaya. Um, we actually aimed, for, with, with this Jazz Camp for Girls project, we actually aimed to establish this community of young girls that are eager to just maybe learn music or even to get this environment where they can express themselves freely. And the other part of the project is to establish this sense of collaboration among its participants. Because we believe that um, it's not just about getting a, an education about music, but it's also getting a, a, a vision of life or maybe just uh, finding your own community to express yourself freely. And we think that those communities are important because whether it's it's a, it's for a social cause or whether it's for a creative cause, it's important to just bring come together and to explore your opportunities even further. So my next question is about your collaborations because we we know that you, you as you may you have mentioned you came from a background that the artistic collaboration is very intense. I I believe. So how do you think that the collaboration in the sense of social, social causes and, and artistic causes can be utilized to find this 
and, and establish this fundamental change in systems. Like, why are we together? Why, why do we stay together? And, and why do we collaborate for you? Um, I think collaboration is key, uh, especially within the genres of music that I make. That has been the case since it first began. You, it's not sitting in your room and making music alone. And the rise of that has been, you know, bedroom producers and stuff, which I think is a is a it's an over accessible thing for people to do. And I think that's really important. But collaboration um, gets gets you out of your head. It brings you new opportunities. I think it makes you feel less alone in this creative world and in the world as a whole. I think it's, we're human beings, we are intrinsically collaborative people. None of us would survive on our own, own for very long, the same as I feel the same about creative projects. Like, I think you learn so much about someone else's very, sorry, from someone else's unique way of making music, of approaching music, of approaching any industry of the way that they conduct themselves, the way that they think about music, the way they think about creating is so um, individual and very different. It can be very different. And I think for me, like when I was like 16, 17 and I'd hit Tomorrow's Warriors, I just got to Tomorrow's Warriors. Um, it was such a place where I just really felt like I was part of a unit I'd built or not built like, but I'd arrived to a community that accepted me and we got to share music, we got to, you know, learn jazz standards together, we got to appreciate that, oh, oh, have you been writing arrangements? Oh, have, are you learning the piano now? Oh, okay, let me see what you're up to. I think that's so important to encourage and push each other to be better at any age. You know, we all have this right now and forever forward, but like at the age of 17 where your mind is so, um, you know, it's running a hundred million thousand miles an hour. You're like, you've got your whole life ahead of you. You're like, what's going on? What do I want to do? Oh, you're doing this. You're interested in that. I'm interested in this. Why don't we like, let's, yeah, check out this album or let's go to this gig together. I think it's, it's um, paramount to allow yourself to be the best version of yourself by involving other people in that process as well. And musically, you know, like, the, the relationship of a, a band or a community is, is so beautiful to be a part of and witness and um, it never stops, do you know what I mean? I think we need more community activity, even just on a social level. Um, we're not individualistic beings. Uh, thank you. Um, like you have mentioned, the, the thing that we're trying to do with the festival and the Keshef is that we are trying to build these communities that we can collaborate for the causes that we believe are important. So my next question will be for the NAS. Um, as you know, we have this, this vocal points that we are trying to establish a common ground with different partners, different, different stakeholders. And the, the way that we are doing is with the collaboration. So can you tell me more about like I know that we have this uh, this ambitious aim to improve the, the jazz education and the music scene in Turkey and establish this imbalances to be more I don't know just to, to make them even even easier to overcome with the, those kind of projects. So can you tell me more about um, the impact of the project? Like what do we aim besides that using the the, the power of arts and culture to achieve those social goals that are important for different kind of groups in, in, in Turkey and even maybe in, in international area. So can you tell me more about the, the long lasting impact and the aim of the projects and, and maybe of course with the Keshefs, how, how they intersect? Um, so this works, right? So um, as the new project of Keshif, uh, Jazz Camp for Girls uh, will have certain deliverables. So the output is going to be basically fostering the gender balance in the jazz field. But most importantly, I would say this is something beyond jazz and beyond music. We're trying to aim with this project to actually allow people, especially girls, to be able to work together, to be able to create a meaningful gathering, to be able to create foster um, collaborations that will actually impact 
the larger scale of the society. So this is something that is beyond music as well. Uh, we're aiming to bring girls to be able to uh, form bands and produce all together. So this is a, a very meaningful impact that we're also hoping to uh, achieve by the end of the project. And this is very much in line with the vision of Keshif. Because as Keshif, uh, as a new enterprise, we're trying to bring um, sustainable communities and um, com with common values all together um, and the vision is to actually work with sustainable cities as well as communities. So this is very much in line with the project as well as uh, the vision of Keshif. So, thank you, Naz. We are, we are all really excited about the upcoming projects of Keshif. And I agree with you. Like when you initiate this, these, those kind of projects, you always have to keep in mind that what you do is not just an, an arts and cultural event or project but rather it has a greater impact that could influence different parts of society in different ways. So my next question will be again to Nabaya. So I know that the, the, the gender imbalance in the music industry is nothing special to Turkey and it has some incredible roots in history and it, it's, those, those roots are still affecting us today in here. And I know that UK jazz scene is starting to change and shift a little bit to more towards more uh, balanced scenes, I, hopefully. And my question is that: How do you stay hopeful? Like, ha ha, or, or do you? Hopefully, you do. <laughs> so, how do you stay hopeful? Because we believe that, that those projects, like Jazz Camp for Girls, and uh, we know that that are other, that are other initiatives that are taking this step to spark this fundamental change, starting from early age, or just shifting how we line up, how, how we organize festival, how we organize arts and cultural events. So how do you stay hopeful? And, and, and how do you feel as like, what's going on on your mind? In, in, te in terms of like, what is the, like the current situation of gender imbalance? And do you think that actually things are changing? Maybe a little bit of loaded question, but <laughs> I mean there were like four questions in there. Let me let me uh, let's break it down. So how do I stay hopeful? Yeah. I think um, I I stay hopeful because I am I guess fortunate to be right up in there and have seen over the last two decades um, change. You know, even though it's like small. And I hope that doesn't sound um, ungrateful or like cynical, but you know, it is the truth. <laughs> it's like small change, um, but even any change is something to scream and shout about because it's taken a lot of work from a lot of people over a really long time to get to where we are. And I think if we look back and see how much has happened, it will give us the fuel to keep on going in a bigger, louder way to make more change for those that are coming. You know, it's not just about doing this for this current generation. We're actually currently thinking and talking about hoping for, pushing for um, the generations that are coming. And also that will continue to make people realize this is an imperative situation. Do you know what I mean? This is not small change. This is not not important. It's like incredibly important, and we have a duty to do this. Every single person, regardless of your gender or your background or anything, you are one person who can make a difference. Whether that may be like speaking to someone and saying like, "I think here's an instrument for you," or you should check out this band, or you should go to jazz camp for girls, or you should do. X, Y, Z, like one person, you don't know who that young woman is going to be. Do you know what I mean? Imagine if someone had said to me at five years old, do you know what? Well, actually, they have several times. You know what? Like jazz isn't really for you. Maybe you should sing or maybe you should do whatever. But like, you know, instrumentalists who are women, like, look in history, that ain't really a thing. That's a lie. Um, and I'm here today doing what I'm doing because I've had a lot of support from a lot of people so I think that keeps me hopeful to keep um, shouting about this message and you know wherever possible even if it's for two people creating an environment 
that supports them and provides them with the opportunities that young men and boys just get because that's what the deal is. Do you know what I mean? So that's the hopeful part. What else did you ask me? <laughs> I, I, I asked that. Um, do you think that the things are really changing? Do I think yeah. Real yeah, things yeah. are really changing? Um, yeah, I think so. Like, I'm here. 50 years ago, I wouldn't have exactly, been here. Exactly. I'm here, I run a business, I run a company, I have a band. You know, like, that's, that's a big deal. And I forget about it, and people don't think of it as a thing because, you know, you just see someone doing it. But, like, it's really hard, and I'm still doing it. And I still have the support from lovely people like yourselves who um, invite me to places like this and people who support my album and people who... Um, you know, welcome me into spaces that I may not have been welcome into 20 years ago, i.e. people who were in my exact position, musicians um, and creatives who weren't given a seat at the table. The table is being expanded, you know? It's not about like there's space for one woman at the table anymore. It's like challenging people to think, okay, yeah, let's double this table. Let's make eight seats instead of four. You know, that's important. Um, so I do think things are changing. They are changing slowly, but slow change is better than no change. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think we have a long way to go, um, but programs like this and what you've been doing and what you're fostering here um, make a huge difference and you don't necessarily see that change and difference now, but you see the change and difference in someone's life at this age, because they're like, oh yeah, you know, I met so-and-so when I was 11 years old at this jazz camp for girls and we're still playing together. That has happened, that, that exact sentence has happened so many times in my life. And that wouldn't have happened if people like yourselves didn't um, provide the space, the facilities, the ac accessibility, to, to do these very important um, social building exercises, which is providing opportunity and space and instruments and money and support and, you know, encouragement, you know. Um, so, yeah, I do think things are changing, but they're changing slowly. I also think it's worth saying that um, this doesn't have to be left up to women to talk about or provide the um, opportunities you like I don't understand often when I'm asked these questions or like what is it like to be a woman in jazz like I don't understand why um, people who identify as men are, are being asked like so what do you think it's like what does it feel like when your band is only men what does it feel like when you only see men on lineups like what is your actual take on this and voice on this and it, that's not quite happening yet. And that's the thing that infuriates me sometimes because you're putting the emotional labor as well as everything else anyway on women. Um, not that I'm saying that I don't want to be here. I'm very happy to talk about it, but I also just want the conversation to be laid on the table of people who identify as men as well. Like you have to do something about this as well. You have to to look at a, a, a music course and be like, oh, there's only like 90% men. What can I do about this? It's not, it's not just for the, the job of um, women in music and young girls to provide you with the like answer <laughs> or um, view. And I think it, that will also be the next step, you know, men fighting the fight as well of making gender imbalance in music, less of a thing. Um, thank you, Nubaya. And that will be my next question, actually, because... My bad. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. Um, because I know that, like, taking everything's responsibility on your shoulders and representing uh, a half of the uh, human population is big of a big chore. So I, I, I really feel like, um, like you just guess my next question and go with it. Thank you. And so um, I want to just turn to the audience and if you have any questions to Nabayo or Naz, would you like to go on? Yeah, sure. I'll have a very uh, 
small one, but I just want to state something very uh, small in the beginning. I think uh, we all need the mindset change uh, because as you speak, a moment just came up to my mind. It was one of uh, the jazz festivals that uh, our friends were promoting and we were like checking how the um, um, the posters look like, so like the key visuals came, etc. So, and the design company is a pretty cool one, like they're doing a good job in da da da. And in the poster, uh, there is like female artist, which is always a singer with, you know, like the long blonde hair and, you know, like, it's okay. I mean, like, we have the singer situation. Uh, of course, like, there's more singer, female uh, artists, etc. But you also have a case with the instrumentalist as well. So how do you see that approach? Like, we have to have the balance as much as possible, you know, foster uh, female women empowerment etc but would you do you think there's also a next step in maybe direct them to more like on instruments like how do you how do you see that approach I don't know if I un understand your question um, I know what you're saying but yeah. what's the well I mean what, what do you think about this actually <laughs> what do I think about yeah, it? Yeah, okay, yeah. That's like, I mean, like more so... the, the, the cliche of uh, the female is the singer of the band and like we don't have so many, like in Turkey, Yeah. like I mean, we always discuss about this. We want to include more artists in the yeah. lineup and et cetera, but we don't have as many female instrumentalists to yeah. begin with. Yeah. Like that's a major, major problem. Like you have something, yeah. that's voice, everywhere. yeah, yeah. I think, um, what do I think about it? I think that it's not a local, it's a global issue. That, this is everywhere. <laughs> And that's because um, this this is like this is historical. You have a lot of people. Uh, well, I'll speak about London because I know about London. In London, um, I'm probably of the last generation that had uh, not to get political, but the government's been tearing down music uh, opportunities for the last decades. The Tories. So in my generation, when I was a young kid, um, every person in primary school that's before you're 11, is given an instrument and it, maybe it's a whole class learn violin for a term or a whole class learn recorder for a term or there's a, a new trumpet teacher in so everybody learns trumpet, whatever it may be. That in itself um, puts an instrument in someone's hands, gives uh, a young woman, a girl, a chance to play an instrument. I think that's the key. You need to put an instrument in a young girl's or a young woman's hands and provide them with the support to keep going. And as you know, you, you get, you're, you're like in primary school, you've got this instrument, then you get to secondary school and bit by bit, those learning instruments drops off. And that's also a social issue. You have, um, there isn't the support for like, yeah, you can do this. You can make money from this. You can, um, have a career you can support yourself and your family whatever it may be you can have this is a you have prospects as this career i think um and it's not wrong music is bloody hard as an industry and as a um as a career but i think it's it's a wider issue of like reality now comes into check you're hitting 13 14 you're like Everyone's starting to ask you, well, what do you want to do with your life? You know, what are the, what are your GCSEs? What's your career? Whatever. And step by step, you're like, well, okay, well, I've got to choose something achievable and secure. Music is not always seen as a secure career option. So how do you make people feel like they have a secure career choice in this? Do you know what I mean? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's true, like you, the more people and women and young women you see in this industry thriving, not just surviving for a year or two, it's like thriving consistently for a decade. I've been working since I was 17. I've been gigging since I was 17 professionally and then obviously the gigs you do when you're a kid and you don't make any money. Um, but like, that's a long time. I'm 31, that's 14 years of like putting in the work. And so you see me now and people give me opportunities now, like that needs to exist 
back when you're 17, 18, 21, 25, like that is going to change things as well. It's the Young Jazz Girls Camp. It's also business support, industry support when you hit 17, 18. It's also funding. You know, I've got a hell of a lot of funding in my life to be able to be where I am. This is a group effort of many, many, many different um, areas within the music industry. Do you know what I mean? I think, yes, there is a, like a, there's a, a hell of a lot more vocalists um, because you see a lot more vocalists in history. It's not to say that there weren't, if we're talking about jazz now, it's not to say that there weren't jazz instrumentalists and I'll keep this so brief because this is a whole other conversation. But like, you know, Second World War, you're, you're obviously going to have bands with women in where is the where are the books saying that where are the records saying that where a lot of them are written out of history if you go and do the research they exist that's what should be um as part of all these festivals and stuff you've got to have education surrounding like you know women have been doing this for a very long time just because you don't see them in the books and the newspapers and on blue note doesn't mean that they didn't exist you know it's not just melba liston or one person or whatever like you've got to have a couple more steps of research to provide um, what is necessary, which is role models, you know? Exactly. Like, and, and I think, I don't know, it's hard to wrap it into that one conversation, but it's, it's a lot of different things that go into the next, like, five to ten years of really seeing change. Like, if we look at the last five to ten years, I don't think I would be where I am now if I was uh, a couple generations back. Like, I think a lot of things have aligned. The internet, the, um, you know, has helped get what I do out there. A lot of support, a lot of my community as well. We all work together. Do you know what I mean? We all work together and it all helps us all. So it's not like I, I just need people to not and young women not to feel isolated in this. I don't know if that answers your question. I felt like that that was a rant. I'm sorry if it was. But um <laughs> it's a hard it's a hard topic to wrap into one question. But yes, there are more vocalists, yes, there need to be instruments to this put instruments in young girls' hands. Um, I think it will be beneficial to point out from where you left off. Um, so the reason why this project is also very significant for Keshif is that uh, we're trying to build up this narrative or maybe remind of ourselves of this narrative to break these canons, these his histories that women are supposed to do only one thing or just sing rather than play the instrument. So this is something probably Jazz Camp for Girls is going to bring out to its adaptation in Turkey to actually bring out these role models for girls rather than just reading what we are being obliged to read. So I think this is also something on the larger uh, scale of impact that this project could actually bring. Absolutely. Also, just to add from what I was saying, I don't think I said this, but the reason that they're alongside not having as many role models who are instrumentalists, like young girls are told they should sing. They are told that it's not like a, oh, yeah, I just want to go and sing as what like it's in addition to that, you get to a course, you get to school, whatever it may be, wherever you are. And it's like, OK, cool. Yeah, you're going to sing. You're not like. Also, what do you want to play? Yeah. Often. That is really a really important part of it as well. You've got um, the educators and the promoters and the whatever. They're part of this. You know, they're part of the... Oh, yeah, 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 you can sing. Oh, do you sing? You know how many people ask me if I sing? I don't sing. You know? Like, I don't. I can't. I'm basically tone deaf, probably. But, um, like, I think nearly like a lot of 96 percent of people ask me oh so do you sing as well what's the purpose of the question yeah. you know i've been playing saxophone since i was 10 years old that's 21 years why do you need to know if i sing as well you are already suggesting that um it's an expectation as well why 
Well, actually, the aim of the project is to get to know, get young, let youngers get familiar with the in instruments and explore those opportunities from the later ages that if they, if they want to go and pick an instrument and go on and lift off from there. So, yeah, that you just naturally answered the question again. Sorry. <laughs> but, Not giving you a chance. It's am like I? perfect. It's a perfect <laughs> interview. <laughs> So maybe we can take other another question, one or two. Don't be shy. Anyone? Um, go on, go on. Yeah. Uh, hi. I'm not sure. Hello. Um, I'm not. Um, uh, I don't don't think it's it's uh, relevant. Um. I'm not sure I have like a complete question, but I'll try as everyone else just to put something out and get your comment on it. But every once in a while, I'm trying to think about kind of like focusing only on women as like girls jazz camp or women jazz festival and not just doing like a jazz festival with 50% or even more of uh, jazz of uh, women representation. Or just like also having sound engineer um, more like one hundred percent. That's uh, also a good conversation. Based, uh, so I'm I'm wondering if like it should be more organic and just comes from the the natural state, or it should be held that way of doing such projects. I know the benefits of such projects, and I know that sometimes you need to do such things. But every once in a while, I'm trying to ask the question: Is that helping or it might also do some i don't know if damage is the right word but some other influences uh for that what what do you suggest bias, bias yes yeah, something like that hmm good question very good question <laughs> i thinking on the fly i would say i would love it to be organic but we've been waiting for it to be organic since the beginning of time. So unfortunately, when things aren't going and being included at the speed at which you want it to be included, you have to provide specific things for it to have a space, you know? Um, I don't know if that made sense. That was a terrible way of articulating it, but like, I think, yeah, in short, I would love it to be organic, but if it was organic, I wouldn't be here. Do you know what I mean? I've had I would have had someone said, "Oh, you know, well, they have." But like, oh, you know, jazz isn't for you, saxophone isn't for you or whatever whatever like and I wouldn't be here. But if if I hadn't have had um spaces to be comfortable and myself, um I wouldn't be here if I if I if people weren't like, "Okay, we're going to decide to have 50% um of women on this festival lineup maybe i wouldn't have been given a chance maybe i would we don't know um you know i think it's it has to it has to be done it has to be done it has to be done because say that again title oh yeah 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 the title is probably unnecessary um but maybe it isn't because that in itself is a label that will, might invite one person you know if if we're talking about like oh i don't want to be the only person i don't want to be the jazz camp for girls tell you it, every single person is going to be a girl or a young woman you know so i think it can be necessary i think a women's jazz festival is that label is unnecessary um it could be you could just have a jazz festival and oh my goodness, like everyone here is a, is a, a, every band leader is a woman. Like how amazing you don't need to shout about it every single time for a pat on the back. Not that I'm saying that that is what's going on, but I'm saying like, I was thinking about another festival in mind that happened a few years ago. And that made me think of that because that organizer was like, we're not saying that we have 60% and that we've, really try to get 60% of women band leaders and instrumentalists and vocalists. Um, we just did it. And I was walking around and I noticed it on the lineup. And I was like, amazing. And he was like, yeah, that's our um, manifesto. That's what we tried to do this year. And I thought that was amazing. But I think you need both, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, I think it's very helpful and useful. And I also think it can hinder sometimes. So it's all everything. 
I don't know if that answers your question, but that's my comment. I think it's, I think it's, yeah, very important, but time in a place, context is key. Do you need to say exactly what it is in this instance? Sometimes you do, and sometimes you don't. Uh, following up on and agreeing with, with every word that you've said, uh, I also want to note that for the Jazz Camp for Girls project, we will be working with a female and a male educator. So we are trying to, and also Jazz Camp for Girls has this culture in trying to create that balance for sure. Um, so we definitely believe that's a very good point. Um, and I think we're going to close down because she needs to catch the sound. Do we have any questions from any women in the house? I just want to open that up since two of the questions have been men. Not that I mind that. I just want to... Sometimes you need to be specific. <laughs> it's not a question, maybe a remark. I'm from the team as well. And the intention that we created the um, Jazz Camp for Girls together with Jazz Denmark and Nordisk Culture Fund uh, the aim was uh, to create the balance, of course, but as you mentioned earlier, it's not only about women, um, women uh, instrumentalists, but also it's all about how you decide on things, you know. I'm one of the core members of the festival and also the Keshif project as well. And we are always saying that we are actually having or taking our power, our female power uh, from the team because most of the people in the main team are female and you can feel this energy inside and when you actually decide on things, we are always there around and also the founder and the CEO of the festival is female as well and you can feel it in the festival and in the projects, etc. It's very important but also I would like to ask maybe after that uh, what do you think about how we can uh, create this awareness, not only within females, but only people from all genders, because it's something that we need to highlight, but at the same time, it needs to be an organic thing. And it's very difficult to create this awareness uh, within all genders, especially um, in cultural and art scenes. Conversation first, I think. I'm trying to uh, understand what you have asked, but I think, yeah, it has to begin with conversation. You have to start calling people out. You have to take accountability for the fact that you are part of something that is not... If you, are, you have to be a part of this, like, with your whole self, which means answering some very uncomfortable questions about your biases or the fact that you may... If uh, that you may if have benefited from uh, what well, you have patriarchy and what does that how does that make you feel what do you want to do about it you know do you want to if we're talking bringing it back to what we said before about um, involving more women in the roles around it around uh, music as in like sound engineers and tour managers and managers and everything like. How do you bridge the gap that exists? You have to take it upon yourself to be like, okay, I'm going to um, mentor someone. And if they don't need your mentorship, then maybe both of you do the job if that's something that can be done. Two tour managers are better than one tour manager. Like, how can, how can you, um, how can you, be a part of the change. It's not just saying like, yeah, I support you. How? What's your actions saying and doing? If there's uh, the space for more people to be a part of the team, um, make them a part of the team. Make more women a part of your team. Do that. It's very simple. It can be anyway. Sorry, maybe if that's too reductive, but... So if there isn't any questions left, maybe we can just try to wrap up the session. So thank you, Nabaya, for being here. And also thank you, British Council, for their supports.
to to make you here <laughs> and also i want to thank nordis called nordis culture fund to um just having this project funded by to to take place in istanbul as well and for the for the details of the project um you can just access our websites online and and get notified from our social media channels about the upcoming news about the project as well so i want to thank in the bio and we're also excited to see you tonight on the stage thank you so much <laughs> and thank you nas for letting us know more about the project as well so and, and thank you all for joining us tonight today thank and you. tonight please to see in the bio on the stage thank you